Alright, okay, so hello dears! <laughs> Yeah. Alright. So welcome yet again to another pre-recorded lecture in our class in chemical parasitology. And for this lecture, what we're going to discuss now are um, is rather <laughs> the examination of blood uh, for parasites. Alright. So for for from the previous lectures to na nato mga topics, they were all focusing on thesis. No, uh, from day one, <laughs> from the creation of your fecal smears until staining, which is the last, diba? They're all um, focusing. Or they're all talking about uh, stool, your feces, right? Uh, so now move on nata. Wow, so now we move on, char. We move on nata. <laughs> so next specimen, which is your blood. All right. So this examination of blood, uh, we have two separate PowerPoint presentations. The first one is examination of blood means more like the lab procedures, and then the second uh, presentation is uh, the parasites that can be seen in our blood. All right. So. How um, do they? How do they look like? What do we look for? Kinsa ni mga parasites? Who are they? No. So same siya with parasites in fecal smears because it's important also that you need uh, you know how to identify them. All right. And emphasis is placed much on uh, much emphasis is placed on malaria. All right or malaria. Okay. Because again, very common in the Philippines, endemic in the Philippines of malaria. So you need to know at least you need to know. <clears throat> Uh, you need to know good how to identify what are the different characteristics, what are the stages of our malaria that you can see in our blood. All right. So again, for this lecture again, we'll be focusing on the lab procedures to examine blood. Okay. All right. So still the same venue na sa bahay pa rin ako. <laughs> Kasi may mga problema pa rin sa AK. I don't know if makabalik pa ba may, but hopefully naman. All right. So in the meantime, kani lang yun. Bahala stressful. But anyway. All right. So again, this is examination of blood for your parasites. Okay. All right, now we go now to um, an introduction before we start. As we mentioned, if I recall in the pre -introduct introductory lectures na to, no, sa start of the semester, the stool is the most commonly submitted specimen to the laboratory for parasite exam. But next to it, and so my next, it's your blood. Because the largest number of parasites next to feces, it can be seen in blood. All right, that's why it's the second most commonly submitted specimen to the laboratory for parasite examination. Blood. Pero ang pinaka-coma talaga is stool. Okay. Alright. Ayan. Next, um, systemic or bloodborne parasitic infections. They are diagnosed by demonstrating the diagnostic stages of the parasites in the blood specimen. Still the same with your um, fecal smears or parasites in your feces or parasites that infect your intes intestinal um, tract. We diagnose them through the demonstration of their respective stages. Okay, so similar then with blood um, specimens or blood-borne parasites. Yes, marami rami sila. <laughs> we identify them or we diagnose the disease through the appearance or through their different stages that we see in the blood specimen. Okay, all right. Ayan. Um, yeah. Although organisms, most of your organisms or some of the organisms in your um, Parasites in the blood, uh, they can be motile, all right? They move in wet, uh, fresh, whole blood, fresh whole blood. But in that case, wet preparation, they are motile, but we cannot identify them through species, okay? Or we cannot identify them uh, in the species level. So what we do is we make what we call your thick and thin blood films. Ayan. So I'm sure I have mentioned these, uh, this thick and thin blood films, diba? Which is the gold standard test, again, for the diagnosis of Malaria, nako sana naman, <laughs> na remember pa, okay? So it's through the thick and thin blood blood films that we are able to identify your parasites in the species level, okay? So it's not only malaria that we can see in the thick and thin, all right? We can also see the other blood-borne parasites, all right? Okay, but again, it's through thick and thin um, blood films that we are able to identify them in the species level, okay? But we can identify, we can already see them in wet preparation, alright? In fresh whole blood, wet preparation. Same sa atuang fetal smears na wet prep. But again, the disadvantage lang or the downside to it is that we cannot identify them by species level. Or we can we cannot identify them to the species level, alright? Okay, ayan. Tapos, uh, proper collection and handling as um, emphasized din naman, for all of the specimens, no, not only blood, not only stool, but all of your specimens, it's imperative that we collect and handle them properly because um, the quality of our test results, the accuracy of our test results will depend on also on the, on the collection and handling of our specimens. All right. So if your specimens, sa collection palang daan or sa handling, uh, are not properly um, 
handled or collected, then of course you will expect also that the results that you will have later on will not be reliable or will not be that reliable. Okay? Because again, sa subod pa lang, no? Sa subod pa lang, bilhin na maayo. Ay, yes. Okay, di ba? So, of course, what would you, what would you, what would you expect in the long run? Their, their results will not be uh, favorable or will not be accurate. Okay? So, very, very important, proper collection and handling. All right. And much experience is also required um, to recognize and identify the various species of blood parasites. Yes, because some of the blood parasites, especially for malaria, um, they are quite difficult to identify. The, there's the stages no, in blood. That's why there are a lot of trainings um, after being a med tech, no, RMT. There are a lot of trainings for malaria identification, um, sponsored or um, facilitated by a lot of uh, our our laboratories here in the Philippines, RITM, mga ganun. And it's important, uh, <laughs> most of your hospitals then, if you work for malaria identification, they require that you undergo training, thorough training you. Because again, they are difficult to identify. Um, there, There is a challenge there. There's a challenge to identify uh, the malaria species, okay, in the blood, in our blood specimen. That's why we need training, all right? And we need experience, okay? But as early as now, at least you already know how do they look like, all right? Um, but what we're doing here is again just um, the theoretical how do they look like okay so already you, you already know how do they look like and then in practice okay it can vary all right but you will gain more experience as you practice the field of med tech okay especially if you focus on malaria or other blood parasites so you will of course master okay? it takes practice it takes experience so don't be too pressured in a man. Alright? So, we'll just take it slowly. Alright? Para, again, ang main goal lang natin is, at least as early as now, you're already, you're already aware, you already know um, how do they look like in the blood specimens and um, when you examine them under the microscope. Alright. Okay. Ayan. Now, we go now to, of course, uh, blood collection, handling, and uh, processing. Now, um, for your blood films, iba, as mentioned, to identify species, um, of your blood parasites, which is our ultimate goal, we make blood films, no? Your blood films can come from a lot of sources, can come from a lot of type of blood, diba? It can come from fresh whole blood, okay? Uh, collected in anticoagulant, so anticoagulated. It could be non-anticoagulated, um, uh, yeah, non-anticoagulated, non so fresh talaga, with, uh, with anticoagulants, or from a sediment in concentration procedures, yes. So it's not only in fecal specimens that there are concentration procedures. In blood, there's also a concentration procedure. Diba? In our lecture in laboratory specimens, diba? we have the knots concentration technique, yes, and the millipore concentration technique. So we'll look into that later in the different methods of examining. All right, so those are some of the possible sources of our blood specimen. Next, um, they should be collected by aseptic techniques. So I'm, or, uh, I read, I'm pretty sure, I'm sure, now, you're quite um, familiar now with the proper collection of blood, diba? With the disinfectant, yes, with the patient care and all that. Veni puncture and skin puncture. Alright, okay, sana na, I hope na pa yung scales. <laughs> Alright, sana ano na, na Japan. But sige lang, um, because of this pandemic, you are, you will be able to practice pag yun more, okay? Hopefully, hopefully. Alright, okay. Next, um, capillary blood. If you use capillary blood, which uh, again is another source of our specimen, it should be free flowing and it's not contaminated with the alcohol that was used in disinfecting. Because again, the alcohol can distort um, your parasites, it can also kill. So it could leave the blood specimen free of your parasites so we cannot examine anything. All right, so again, it should be free flowing and it should not be contaminated with your alcohol. And aside from that, if your blood is coming from a milk, meaning it's uh, uh, difficult to draw, diba? if skin punctures, so if you're always milking the finger, you can introduce um, tissue fluid, no excess tissue fluid, and this can this tissue fluid can dilute your blood specimen, which will make it difficult to detect your parasites. So as much as possible, if you are performing skin puncture, make sure that it's really free flowing. Uh, clean up pag puncture, medyo deep para maraming blood, okay? And um, yeah, so you don't need to milk. Do not milk. Ayaw sige, uh, do not, ayaw sige na, okay? If your blood specimen is coming from the capillaries, okay, skin puncture, and then you're looking for blood parasites. Because again, there's a tendency that the tissue fluid brought about by the milking action in your fingers can dilute the, the parasites in the blood. So therefore, you will uh, have a difficult time in um, detecting the parasites. Are, okay, ayan. 
And um, anticoagulants, if you use anticoagulants, they may cause some distortion uh, to the staining process of the parasite morphology. But most of the laboratories are still using anticoagulated blood. And usually, if there is anticoagulated blood or you need an anticoagulated blood for parasite examination, you use what tube? The purple tube because it contains EDTA. Because we don't, we are looking for, um, we want to preserve RBCs, man. So we don't want na muklat sila, okay? Because if muklat ang RBCs, then the parasites can be trapped in it, okay? And we cannot see anymore, di ba? If muklat na siya, of course, we cannot make smears out of it, di ba? Recall in your um, MD14, HIS, di ba? In preparing um, peripheral blood smears, we use EDTA because we want to make sure that the blood is not coagulated or it's not clotted so that we can still examine the RBCs and WBCs, okay? So it's still the same reason here. That's why we need EDTA, okay? And most of your parasites, example, your malaria, they are found within RBCs. They're inside RBCs. So may, um, the more reason that we need to preserve the RBCs, okay? So that's why we use EDTA, anticoagulated tubes, or what's I call her? Nako, dapat master na. It's your purple tube. Ayan. So here's an example. Ah, okay, what's well, Okay, all right. Ayan. Okay. Now, if your malaria is suspected in a patient, it should be your your specimen or blood specimen should be collected and prepared. Uh, smears should be prepared within one hour of collection because the longer the storage happens, the longer or the intense or the more distorted the parasite uh, may be or eventually lead to the loss of parasites. They are quite sensitive then. Okay? So, it should be prepared as immediately as possible. So, within one hour of collection and smears if you were... If you're suspecting malaria in the patient. Okay, and the timing of obtaining blood samples can also be um, a, a great factor. And it varies from one parasite to another. Excuse me. <clears throat> so, example, what do you mean by timing? Uh, some of your blood parasites, which um, we will discuss in the uh, next presentation, uh, the one that I mentioned, parasites and blood smears, some parasites, they exhibit what we call periodicity. Okay? Alright. Periodicity. Ayan. Periodicity. So what do you mean by periodicity? Um, they exhibit periodicity in the sense that um, there is a particular time of day, okay, that they are of great concentration in your blood, okay? So there's a particular time of the day, maybe morning, afternoon, dinner, <laughs> evening, or whatever, particular time of the day or particular duration in the day that they are uh, in great concentration or they can be found in great concentration in your blood, all right? So you must know the timing kung if kanina parasite, if malaria, uh, every when kamu collect. Um, if malaria is suspected in the patient, after every how many, uh, after every what time will you collect? At what time should you collect? Because that would play an important role. Okay. Because again, um, some of your parasites they exhibit different periodicity, but most of your parasites they exhibit natural periodicity, meaning at all times, at any time of the day, they can be found in the blood. All right. But there are some parasites. Example, your filarial worms, the microfilarii. Okay, that they exhibit, example, nocturnal periodicity. Okay, so we say nocturnal, so gabi. So, um, sa gabi, sila marami. Okay, so uh, the number of microfilaria, the larva in your blood, uh, they are of great concentration or they are, they are of high concentration during the night if nocturnal. And if there are some also that exhibit diurnal, so, we say diurnal in the morning or in the afternoon, okay? So, it's during those times that you can see a lot of microfilarias um, circulating in the system of your patient. So, then you can already understand that, okay, I will collect blood at this time because there's nocturnal periodicity. Okay, I will collect uh, blood at this time because they, there is their, their diurnal periodicity. Ganun. Okay. Now, <clears throat> for malaria, <coughs> we also have your malaria parasites. They exhibit what we call your um, paroxysms. Okay, ayan. So, more of this in our lecture in the different parasites in blood. No, paroxysms is their parang, as what I understood it, uh, paroxysms, their um, parang duration no, or time in which they are able to occupy the RBCs and then after they then lyse the RBCs. Parang ganun. So, that's one paroxysm. Usually, some of them they have. Parang turnover, turnover of the RBCs and uh, that the malaria use, you no? Know? And then after a while, they, they hemolyze the RBCs, okay? And um, some of them, they exhibit long par par uh, dugay na paroxysms, like 72 hours, you no? Know? But for plasmodium falciparum, which is the deadliest, it's deadly because within 18 hours lang, if I'm not mistaken, 18 hours, uh, 
the RBCs then will lyse because the malaria parasites are then will then go out of the RBCs. Okay, so parang they're done using the RBCs, <laughs> they're done hijacking the RBCs, so they now lyse the RBCs. Uh, yeah, parang ganun. Okay, all right. So that's more on more on discussion of malaria and our parasites in blood smears. Don't worry. Okay, all right. So the point lang is you need to know so that. You can you know when to collect blood, okay? When is the most appropriate time to collect blood, all right? So that you can really obtain the parasites, so that you don't obtain, uh, so you so that you don't uh, miss the parasite, okay, in the blood of the patient, okay? All right. Ayan. Um, <laughs> okay. Now for typical blood processing of uh, your specimen, of course. Uh, we prepare, as I mentioned, thick and thin your blood smears. We stain them again. We give them color because. Because the bas mentioned in our last <laughs> discussion, staining fecal smears, you also stain it here because it's through staining that we are able to give color. No, we color the different structures, morphology of our parasites. Because why do we need, why do we do that? It's because we it would help us you know, identify, look at the various structures, and um, eventually yes, accurate, accurately identify the parasite. Okay, and then after staining, you examine them microscopically. All right. Okay. And blood samples, as I mentioned, if there is low concentration, example for microfilaria for your filarial worms, if there's low concentration of your filarial worms, you can use concentration techniques such as your knot technique. Some of your parasites also can be examined using um, the buffy coat, the right? buffy coat, remember buffy coat, and also cultures, but not common, like Leishmania, the right? recall, the NNN medium, Novine, McNeil, and the Coel medium for your Leishmania, the right? that's a blood parasite. So, uh, very important uh, culture medium for Leishmania. But again, in routine lab, not much uh, performed as, as, I've, <laughs> as I've experienced. Most of the time, mga thick and thin smears talaga. Alright, okay. Ayan. And of course, your buffy coat. Here is an example of your buffy coat. Ayan. And an edta tube, diba? as you can see. Medyo thick ang buffy coat. Parang may cancer yata yung patient or leukemia. <laughs> ng picture na to. Uh, but yeah, this is the buffy coat. It's the layer, diba, between your packed RBCs and plasma of a centrifuge tube, okay, of a centrifuge tube. And this here contains your WBCs and your platelets. Some of your parasites, blood parasites, can also um, inhabit your WBCs. That's why we also have buffy coat examination. Okay. All right. Ah, yeah. So um, we now go to the different methods for blood examination. So again, uh, it could vary, you know, from the source. So we'll start first for venous blood. So how do we collect that? It's through venipuncture. So we have the knots concentration method and the membrane filtration method. And for finger prick blood sample or capillary, you have the wet fresh preparation, capillary tube method, and your stain smears. All right. So we'll go through all of that individually. So akong gilas and stain smears because this is our activity also in the laboratory. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Ayan. Okay. Now we go first with your um, knots concentration uh, method. By the name itself, it's a concentration method. So, when do we perform or when do you perform this? It's usually used or performed if there is a low concentration of your uh, microfilaria, usually. If you want to detect microfilaria. If there is a uh, low parasitemia, okay, when you say parasit parasitemia, emia, blood parasite, so parasite to count or parasite level in your blood, low parasitemia uh, level of your microfilaria, usually, of microfilaria. So you perform uh, your um, knots concentration method. Uh, again, low numbers of microfilaria. Now, how do we perform it? 1 ml of your venous blood, okay, plus 2 ml of your 10% formalin. And then we put that in a tube centrifuge for 1 minute at 500 times G. Ayan. And what happens is the supernatant is discarded and the sediment is placed on a slide, smeared, and then stained with uh, gem cell. The disadvantage lang is we cannot see the motile microfilaria because the formalin kills um, the microfilaria. Okay, so, uh, but again, we can see the uh, microfilaria, especially in low counts of microfilaria, so it's light infection lang. So, it can be missed if there is no concentration method to be performed, like thick and thin lang. Kung you have little amounts of microfilaria in your blood, no, you can miss it if you only perform thick and thin blood films. So, 
it's best to perform the knots concentration method. The formalin there serves as parang a fixative then, <clears throat> so that the morphology of your microfilaria will be preserved so that it will not be destroyed during centrifugation. Because centrifugation is also a harsh environment, di ba? It's pain naman ka for 500 times G, so that's fast. So that could lead to distortion of morphology. So to prevent that, you also need uh, a fixative. So that's also the purpose of your formalin. So that's the knots concentration method. When do we use it? Usually to detect low numbers of microfilarity. So that's venous blood. Okay, all right. Next method is the membrane filtration method. Um, for the membrane filtration method, we use a 1 ml of fresh or anticoagulated blood. We, we use a syringe and we draw it up. Okay, and then we then lyse the RBCs by adding 10 ml of distilled water. And then this mixture is then passed through this uh, swiney or swiney filter holder. And this inside of it contains already the filter. Okay, um, the filter is what we are using, or the, the filter is what we are after because the filter will serve as will serve will catch the microfilaria, okay, or the parasites that are found in the specimen. And this filter is then stained with gemsa and then examined under your LPO for microfilaria, usually for microfilaria. Now, um, we can also use what we call the millipore yeah, or nucleopore membrane filters like this one. So the same syringe, you pull it, then you lyse the RBC so that there will be no other um, uh, there will be no other debris, okay, but ang, ang parasites or microfilaria lang ang mabilin or the microfilaria will remain, okay, and um, the millipore lang is much more sensitive and it can screen larger volumes of blood compared to the swiney filter. Okay, and the millipore is considered to be the, uh, this technique, membrane filtration, is the most sensitive uh, method of detecting small numbers of microfilaria, uh, but it's expensive for routine use. So, you, it, it would depend on the laboratory kung um, in their financial capability or in their um, what they want to detect. If, if they want to use not concentration method or the membrane filtration method. Okay, so as you can see, for venous blood or most of the methods that we have discussed so far, they are looking for microfilari talaga. Okay, or they are after look, they are after the detection of microfilari, especially in low numbers of microfilari, like in light infections or early infections. But so in a way that would help us diagnose earlier the patient, so that the treatment will then start early, so that the patient will then recover early. All right. Okay. I know. Okay. Now, um, for the next uh, slide, what we're going to, uh, next video rather, <laughs> what we're going to look now are, uh, discuss now are the different uh, methods using the finger prick blood sample or your capillary blood. Okay, so I'll see you on the next pre-recorded lecture. <laughs> on the next video pala. Okay, sorry. <laughs>